Today, we're going to talk about what the debt ceiling has to do with this. Before we talk about the debt ceiling, though, we need to talk about the federal debt. What is it and where does it come from? Say that this year, the federal government brings in $30 in tax revenue, but that it actually spends $35. So it's got to borrow $5 to make up the difference. We call that $5 this year's deficit. The national debt is just the accumulation of all those yearly deficits. Now sure, in real life, it's more like trillions of dollars of spending in debt, but the principle is exactly the same. So how big is the debt? Well, you could look at the raw dollar figure, but you should actually adjust it for inflation, because a dollar 50 years ago is just worth more than a dollar today. Even better is to look at debt as a percent of GDP. Why? Well, it's the same reason that me owing $1,000 is actually less problematic than a six-year-old owing $10. Why? Because I earn a lot more money than the six-year-old. Well, our economy is growing over time. We're earning more and more income, which means we're able to support a higher debt level. But even with those adjustments, the past several years have seen some very large deficits, which have caused our debt to shoot up. But the debt ceiling is supposed to prevent the debt from rising, right? Well, it's doing a pretty lousy job, and the simple reason is that every time Congress needs to borrow more money, it simply raises the debt ceiling. Well, what if it didn't? Wouldn't refusing to raise the debt ceiling solve the problem? No. Remember, a swelling debt comes from a mismatch between expenditures and revenues, just like a swelling waistline comes from a mismatch between diet and exercise. So trying to control the debt without cutting spending and without raising taxes is sort of like trying to control your weight, not with diet and not with exercise, but by buying smaller clothes. And the results would be just as ugly. Remember the financial crisis of 2008 where the stock market got cut in half and millions of Americans lost their jobs and were still recovering from it? Remember how much fun that wasn't? Well, that would be a freaking party compared to what would happen if the debt ceiling prevented the government from paying its bills. Social security checks wouldn't go out. Hospitals wouldn't get reimbursed by Medicare. No more paychecks for the armed services. Interest rates throughout the economy are benchmarked to the rate that the government pays on its own debt. That rate would shoot up, which would raise interest rates on mortgage loans, on student loans, on small business loans. Basically, it would be a self-inflicted Great Depression. So if Congress doesn't like the debt that results from its spending decisions and taxing decisions, then instead of buying smaller clothes, maybe they should go on a spending diet and get some tax exercise. And who is Econ Guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont. Thank you.